For this post I put together on linked lists, I wanted to have a bunch of little inline animations that explained how linked lists work, like how you add nodes to them and remove them and stuff. And I wanted to have a fun header that would make it clear that the rest of this post is animated. I put these together in Sketch and then used Svelte and AnimeJS to, to actually animate them and make embeddable components. So I wanted to go through how I did that and show you how I put together this animation. Over in Sketch, I've got the original asset here. So I just use Sketch to draw out these boxes and give everything colors and whatever. And I've got a special naming scheme here where elements that I want to be able to animate, I named with B colon their name. And so when I copy, if I right click on one of these elements, I can copy SVG code. And I can paste this in my terminal by running PB paste. This is the Mac command that pastes the terminal as standard output. And you can see these names that I gave them in Sketch are coming out in the SVG code. So we've got like B with code, B colon animated guide. So I made a little script that I could pass this through that would replace these B colon whatever elements with Svelte bindings. And you could do this with find and replace pretty easily. But since I was doing a bunch of them, I made a little script to do it called SVG to Svelte. This is a Ruby script, but it's pretty much just doing a bunch of find and replaces, including running this SVG, SVGo converter um, that has a handful of options to kind of streamline the SVG, get rid of some unnecessary things. Um, and then the key part is that I'm replacing B colon whatever with bind colon this, which is a Svelte prop it's going to make this accessible to our Svelte app. So I can try out that script. If I run SVG to Svelte, it's going to take the thing that's in the clipboard and run it through that process. And so now I can take, um, take this code and paste it into a Svelte component. So let's make a little Svelte project. I'm going to run npx dgit from svelte.js slash template. I'm going to make a new animation project. And we'll go into animation. Just run yarn to install everything. And I also need to yarn add anime.js, which is going to do the actual animations. And Svelte has some built-in animations too, um, but I was trying to do a little more complicated things than I think Svelte animations were doing, and I wanted to play around with anime.js too, so that's why I ended up using that. But inside here, I can go and make a component. I'm going to call this maybe linked list animation.svelte. And I'll paste in the code that my script generated. So we've got a bunch of bind this things. I'm also going to go back to the terminal and take that array of variables that it provided and just take these and paste them up into a script tag up top. So these all correspond to the elements down below. I also need to import anime.js so we can actually do some animations. And I'll save this now. I'm going to try using this file um, in our main.js file here and just see if it's all working so far. Linked list animation is the name of the file. I'm going to import that and render it into the body, not passing any props. Then I'll run the dev server here with yarn dev, and then we can bring that up. So there's our image. It's really big and it's not animated yet. Let's push this to the side. So now we can start building out the animation. Let's go to our animation file and we have our SVG here and we've got anime.js imported. So I'm going to create a function called setup. You'll see why in a second. Inside here we're going to actually do our anime.js uh, initialization stuff. So we can call anime.timeline and uh, initialize it with an easing of ease in sign. A bunch of different easings. You can look at the anime.js docs for different easings and try them out. Basically just try out different ones until it feels right. I'm going to set autoplay to true so that we can get it playing right away. And we'll set a duration of 500 milliseconds. This will be just the default duration of each step of the animation. Um, I'm going to run this setup after the component mounts. So Svelte has an on mount function. We can import on mount from Svelte. And we can call on mount. We pass in a function to run when the component mounts. So we actually just call setup. 
The reason for this is because we don't want anime to run until the DOM elements are all present. Um, and this script can and will run before everything on the DOM is present, um, which will be a problem when anime tries to find these elements. So these, all these bind directives, if I look for bind colon, whatever, these won't be actually bound until the component is mounted. So we want to wait for that to happen. Let's try this out. Make sure nothing's broken yet. Seems to be working. Uh, I'm also going to make this a little bit smaller. Let's set the width to maybe 400. Uh, let's keep these relative here. 847 by 514 is 1.64. So what we'll do this will be 400. And the height will be 400 divided by that 1.64. 242-ish. Let's see if that's any better. Yeah, there we go. Now we can actually see it. By the way, this little pop-up thing is called Alfred. Um, it's like an app launcher, but it can also do math, and it's pretty handy. Check that out if you have a Mac. All right, so we've got this running. I'm going to open up the console and see what's happening here. Anime is not defined. Let's call that anime. And we're okay. Great. So now we can start building this out. I'm just going to kind of go one step the animation at a time. So we're making this timeline. And we can call dot add and add in a uh, an object that describes like the next step of the timeline. So we'll need targets, which is an element or elements that you want to target with anime. So this is going to be called link one two, and that is a variable here. That's going to be the link from box one to box two, and we want to animate its opacity from 0 to 1. I'll set the easing to ease in out expo. And then the bit of magic that makes the line get drawn is this stroke dash offset. And this is an SVG uh, line animation trick. If you Google for stroke dash offset, you can see tutorials on how, to, how, to, how this actually works. But we can pass anime.set dash offset as the first attribute here and zero as like what we're going to animate from set dash offset to zero. And this is a function provided by anime that'll set it to a, a progressive, a value that progresses from something to zero. So I don't know if you saw that, but you refresh again. You can see the line is getting drawn there. Now we're actually going to be drawing a bunch of lines here. So I'm going to make this a function. Let's make a function up here called draw line. It's going to take targets. And it's going to return this object here. And targets will be this thing here. Everything else is the same. So now I can add a draw line and pass line one, two. Whoops, link one, two. Let's see if that works still. So, good. And I'll circle back to adding these little arrowheads, but let's get the other lines in here now. So we're going to do link from one, two, then we'll do link two, three. Then we'll have link three, four. And now we should see that line, then that line, then that line. Cool. But it's happening kind of fast. So I'd like to make this one take a little bit longer. And we've got to customize it with a duration. So to make this customizable, we can pass in maybe extra options and spread those options down here. And so for this one, I want to pass a, an object with a duration of 1200 to make this take 1.2 seconds. That's a little better. The last draw line we're going to have is this little green line under animated. So I'll add a draw line. And this thing is called code underline. It's the name of the binding for there. And then it draws that. So let's fill in these arrows. Each one of these arrows needs to fade in. So I can add a fade here. So the targets are going to be link one, two arrow. That's the name of this thing here, link one, two arrow. And we're gonna animate its opacity from zero to one. And when we create this array from zero to one, anime kind of runs through all of these before it starts in animations. 
it starts everything at the initial state. So you'll see when I when I hit save here and the app reloads, this arrow is going to be initially invisible until after this happens, then it's going to fade in the arrow. So there it goes. But that was also a little bit slow. Let's make that a bit faster. We'll set the duration to maybe 30 milliseconds. Maybe 100. That's pretty good. And since we need to do this again a few more times, I'm going to take this out and make a function called fade in. And we'll pass in our link one, two arrow. And we'll make our fade in function up here. It takes targets and returns that object. And whoops, this needs to be an arrow. And that parenthesis should be over there. Let's try that again. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we can take this. And we also want to, after the link from two to three draws, we want to fade in the two, three arrow. And after the line from three to four draws, we want to fade in the three, four arrow. Let's see. That fade in, that fade in, that fade in. So that's it. This animation is ready to go.